Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. For nearly 30 years, a second home to the Alabama Crimson Tide. Not since 1969 had LSU tasted a home victory against the Tide. From Bryant to Perkins, through Curry and Stallings, there was one thing that was certain, Alabama owned LSU in Baton Rouge. For Mike DeBose to continue the magic, it would take one of Bama's most memorable comebacks. On November the 7th, 1998, it would take a Crimson Classic. Hello everyone, I'm Gary Harris and this is Crimson Classics. You know, Alabama's winning streak in Baton Rouge was one of the most remarkable stories in the history of college football. Starting with the presidency of Richard Nixon, it outlasted seven presidents, flower power, disco, and even grunge music. It saw the fall of the Berlin Wall and the birth of the internet. At a place that prides itself on home field advantage, Death Valley was no threat to the Crimson Tide. Tiger Stadium, called by ESPN and Sport Magazine as the most feared roadside in college football. For the Crimson Tide, though, it was almost like home. Five times during the streak, the only home loss suffered by the Tigers was to Bama, with Bama shutting out the Bengals four times and holding them to their lowest total of points that year eight times. The country's fifth largest stadium wasn't big enough for the Tide. Even as a redshirt freshman quarterback, Andrew Zhao had a veteran's awareness of the streak. The LSU game has always been a, uh, a game that you know, everyone's looking forward to. And they know if we're going on the road, we're, we're supposed to win that game. And you don't want to be that first team to lose on the road to LSU. And it was no different for junior college transfer Quincy Jackson. But I didn't want to be that. Um, one or say that that year, which was 98, you know, LSU finally broke that streak in 30, 30 years maybe, it was like 30 something years. And, um, and that stuck in the back of my mind. And on top of that, you know, who, I don't know nobody that liked losing. Alabama's success on the Bayou is even more amazing considering Tiger Stadium's reputation as one of college football's toughest road venues. Part of that reputation stems from its devoted, even rabid fan following. Just ask Bama's Quincy Jackson. That night before, we watched a movie, I run, like vampires and some stuff. I, I can't remember what the movie was, but it was like people with long teeth. And after we watched that movie, we were getting ready to get on the bus. And how about we saw people outside with vampire teeth? And that freaked everybody out. And I was like, man, let's get, on, get over here tomorrow night and let's win this game and get on back to Tuscaloosa. Everyone's trying to prepare me because I've never been to LSU and they're trying to prepare me for the, for the fans and the, the fingers that you get and, uh, and the, the fans rocking the um, bus and stuff like that. So I, I'm getting um, you know, coached on, about this all week and, and once we get there is everything that they said. <laughs> so the fans at LSU are a little, a little more, um, a little looser than the other fans I've, I've been around. <laughs> Um, but I remember in you know, one game, um, we were sitting on the field and we had about two guys were on the field and come down towards the offense and turn around and moon us. So that was interesting. So, I, so from that, on, that point on, I said, I don't expect anything different from the LSU fans. For Sean Alexander, there was a respectful appreciation of the LSU fanatics and of Bama's Bayou success. You know, it's one of those things, their fans are always in it. They're excited. They're always knowing uh, that they, uh, they're going to, their fans always feel that they're going to be a cause for their team to win. So they're always in the game, which makes it exciting for you because, you know, we get to come into a place like that and we had a long win streak um, by the time I was got there um, where, you know, that we can come in there and be the bad guys, you know, and ruin their day again, you know, you know, uh, we're always the guys that they could never beat, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so it was just one of those, those things that, uh, you know, their stadium was exciting and fun and you always knew something special was going to happen there.
Alexander was indeed part of something very special the last time that Alabama had been in Baton Rouge. As an inexperienced redshirt freshman, Sean helped extend the Tide's Tiger Stadium win streak and in doing so made his own Alabama football history. I remember Dennis, uh, you know, gets hurt, you know, grabs his you know, bum leg. Um, Curtis Alexander had a broken um, uh, left arm. And, you know, so I kind of got thrown into the game. And my first carry was a touchdown, 17 yards, and we go into halftime, 7-0. By the end of the evening, Sean had totaled 291 yards and four touchdowns on only 20 carries. The streak continued as the Tide blanked the Bengal Tigers 26 to nothing. Four carries, I had 160-some-odd yards and, uh, and, and uh, three touchdowns. You know, and it just, I, I stayed in the game. It was just one of those things where magical, you know. <laughs> you know, I remember telling the guys on the side, like, man, I had a game like this in high school. You know, I, I've stepped in zones like this before, you know, and I just kind of would get away from people, you know. I mean, it's like I'm, I'm about to throw the no-hitter right now, you know. Um, when you get into moments like that, you just kind of, you take it in and you just enjoy it. But at the same time, you don't let no one else get you out of that zone. And, uh, you know, it's one of those great, great feelings that uh, it's just amazing that it's just happening. The 1998 edition of the Bengal Tigers were struggling to become bowl eligible. With three games left, LSU needed two more wins to make it into postseason play. Two of those games were on the road, with the Bama contest the only home game left for the Tigers. Coach Dubose was in his second year as Bama's head man, and he was looking for his first big conference victory. For the 98 season, the Tide at 5-3 overall would become bowl eligible with a win in Baton Rouge. Pre-game warm-ups are over, the gumbo's a-bubbling, and the crawfish a-boiling. It's time for kickoff in Baton Rouge when Crimson Classics returns. It's a perfect day for football. LSU wins the toss and elects to receive. And with that, it's time for kickoff on the Bayou. The Tigers start at their own 26 after Rainbow City's Chad McGeehee brings down Rondell Mealy. Senior quarterback Herb Tyler connects for five on first down as Marcus Spencer wraps up Larry Foster. Senior All-American Kevin Falk appears to have lots of room before slipping down after a gain of only three. Third down, Falk keeps his feet for a gain of four and an LSU first down. Tyler goes long for Abram Booty, but cornerback Fernando Bryant has blanket coverage. Quarterback Tyler shows why he's a double threat as he keeps on the ground for a gain of seven. A big hit by Reggie Miles stops Falk short on third and one. Is the sophomore from Pascagoula, Mississippi really laid the wood to number three in white. But the Tigers gamble on fourth down and Falk picks up the needed yard. From the LSU 48, it's Tyler in the shotgun. He finds Larry Foster for seven yards. Falk manages just a yard on his second down carry. Here is the 10th play of the drive, a drive that has already consumed four minutes and 20 seconds. Again, two wide outs to the near side, one to the left side. Tyler will work out of the shotgun here with Banks and Falk alongside. Now with motion from the wide outs, Tyler has time, throws it across. It is knocked away from Booty by Spencer. Nice play by Marcus Spencer as Abram Booty, the sophomore from Shreveport, was coming across the middle. The pass was there, but so was Marcus Spencer. The third pass, he's broken up this yeah, good tight coverage by the secondary people. That's what you got to have when you put all those people up in the box to stop that running game. After a short LSU punt, Bama starts from its 34. Andrew Zhao under pressure, underthrows Sean Alexander. Sean gets a tough four on second down. Andrew puts the third down pass over the head of Quincy Jackson. 
That'll bring on Daniel Pope, who booms this 53-yarder all the way down to the LSU nine-yard line. With the clock moving under nine minutes, the Tigers embark on a long drive. Tyler scrambles for five yards. Third Tyler carries. Falk then rips off a gain of 15 before reform Alabama native Tony Dixon shoves him out of bounds near the LSU 30. Falk then loses four though, courtesy of Alabama's Marcus Spencer. What a play by number 41 in the Crimson Jersey. Undaunted, the Tigers take to the air as Tyler finds fullback Tommy Banks for 10. Marcus Spencer with the hit again. Then it's Tyler to Abram Booty for 13 more and a first down near midfield. LSU hits Alabama with the reverse as Larry Foster takes it to the Alabama 27. Reggie Miles saves the touchdown. Alabama's defense stiffens and forces the Tigers' Chris Govin to attempt a 40-yard field goal. And with the day's first of many strange bounces, the ball hits the upright, keeping the game scoreless. But this wouldn't be the last strange bounce of the game. Back on offense, the Tide rides Alexander for eight tough yards to the Alabama 31. Eric Locke loses three, setting up a third and five. Five wide outs. Here comes LSU, stuck in the front, up the middle. They come, the quick release. Caught by Quincy. He's loose to the 40. He's to the 45, 50. On his feet to the 45 of LSU and down to the 41-yard line. Clarence LeBlanc finally put him down. Quincy Jackson with a little release got the easy pass across the middle and the rest was the cue man for 30 yards. Good call by the offensive coordinator, Neil Callaway. That time, one way to combat that rush that they're putting on Zao up the middle is to get rid of the ball quick. A little three-step, get rid of it over the middle and let the receiver run. Quincy Jackson, Alabama's leading receiver, takes a short pass, turns it up with that good running ability and knocks it down in there inside the 45 for a first down. After an incompletion, Zal tries the option on second down, but Booger McFarlane leaves Zal with no option at all. Setting up a third down and 12. Andrew in the shotgun just barely overshoots Quincy in the end zone. With the clock winding down in the first quarter, Alabama and LSU trade punts, with Alabama's Daniel Pope booming a 56-yarder to end the first quarter. After 15 minutes of football, Alabama has but one first down while the Bayou Bengals have already rolled off two 10-play drives. But the scoreboard has the important numbers, and the tide is still dead even with LSU. The second quarter of play and the first points of the game when we return on Crimson Classics. It's second quarter action from Baton Rouge on Crimson Classics. After a face mask penalty, LSU starts at its own 33, where Tyler hits Booty with his 14-yard strike. Hard knows Rondell Mealy up the gut for 11 on the draw. LSU is into Bama territory at the 42. Back to the air for the Tigers, and Tyler finds Foster for 16 yards and another LSU first down. On first down, Oxford, Alabama freshman Darius Gilbert stops LSU's Rondell Mealy for no gain. On second and long, Tyler misfires, intended for booty. On third and nine, Tyler to the air. Bama's Fernando Bryant with great coverage. Great physical play from the Murfreesboro, Tennessee senior. Chris Chauvin with another LSU field goal attempt. 
this time from 42 yards. First it was the upright, now it's the crossbar. The second of two Bama bounces keeps the game scoreless. With the passing game struggling, Andrew goes to Sean for some Alabama offense. You know, the biggest thing with Andrew was whenever he started off a game slow, it was because he was trying to do too much, you know. So for him, it was when it was, hey, you know, I'm your boy, calm down, give it to me. You know what I mean? You throw it to me, you hand it to me, I'm going to get you into a rhythm. And uh, that's just kind of how we talked, you know. And then there were some times where I'd be like, hey, you know, well, you know why, why are you trying to be um, like this superstar, you know. And, uh, you know, and he would say the same thing to me when I was off. Hey, why are you trying to be a superstar? If you just do what you were blessed to do, it's going to be good enough. Zal obliges his running back, and Alexander picks up three yards where there appeared to be none. Sean once again for five and Alabama first down. This time the Tiger defense catches on as number 37 is stopped for no gain. It's Sean off left tackle for four. That's five straight carries for Alexander. Is he a workhorse or what? On third and six, Andrew to the air, but Michael Vaughn can only manage three yards and the tide is forced to punt. With 8.44 left in the second quarter, LSU had thoroughly dominated the play on the field, but the only numbers that count were even, 0-0, zero to zero, a scoreless tie. But with the Tigers pinned inside their own 15-yard line, that was about to change. On first down, LSU gets plenty of breathing room as Tyler finds tight end Kyle Kipps, who rumbles for 18 yards. It's to the air again for LSU as Tyler DeBooty connects for 10 and another LSU first down. Tony Dixon makes the tackle. Pass complete to now the Tigers mix in the ground attack as Falk takes the draw for 13 yards to the Alabama 45. LSU continues to roll as Tyler connects again with Booty, this time for 14 yards. From the tie 31, it's the big tight end Kipps for nine yards as Darius Gilbert brings him down. On second and short, the Tide defense rises to the occasion as Spencer drops Falk in the backfield. But on third and three, number three in white powers for enough to move the chains. It's Falk again on first down as he slices for five. Then for 15 more to the Alabama one as the Bayou faithful and Baton Rouge go wild. First and goal from the one, who gets the call? It's a no-brainer as Falk powers over for six, 10 plays, 86 yards, with Tyler going four for four, and Falk adding 34 yards and the touchdown. LSU leads six to nothing as the Tigers send on new kicker Danny Boyd, but he gets the same result. He hits the upright. Two LSU kickers, three kicks, and three bounces off the goalpost. After the LSU kickoff, it's Bama's ball on the 20. With 3.23 left in the half, Andrew to the air, but he's pressured into throwing it away. Zal from the shotgun throws incomplete, attempting to hit Marvin Brown. So on third and 10, it's Andrew to Sean, but the play gains only four and stops the clock. Daniel Pope is called on to punt again, and LSU will have nearly three minutes to work with before the half. Daniel gets 40 yards out of this kick, but more importantly, keeps it away from the dangerous Kevin Falk. Tyler's still hot following the LSU scoring drive. He hooks up with Reggie Robinson for 16 yards, 
Nice lick, though, by Reggie Miles. The LSU quarterbacks hit five in a row. But Fernando Bryant stops the streak. Second and 10, Tigers, 2.39 to play in the half. From the shotgun, Falk takes the handoff for a gain of four. And after an LSU penalty, Antoine Hunter's deflection of Tyler's pass results in a harmless completion for no gain, and bringing up fourth down, LSU has to punt it away. Tyler's pass is complete to Dangerfield. Zhao in the shotgun. Looks to Michael Vaughn running an out pattern. It's good for a six yard gain and it stops the clock with 131 in the half. After an offsides by LSU gives Bama a first down, Andrew is snowed under by the Tiger D. He's sacked for a loss of nine. Sean gets it back, plus one, as he takes the Zao handoff for 10 yards to make it third and nine. With the clock running, they'll try that play once again, but this time it gains only four. After Pope punts it away, Alabama goes to the locker room, unbelievably down by just six points. Alabama's down six nothing at the half, but comebacks are nothing new for the Crimson Tide. The next 30 minutes of football, when Crimson Classics returns. It's more action as we return to the Battle on the Bayou. Alabama starts the second half from its 18. Sean fights for a tough three on first down. The tie breaks the huddle facing second down and seven. Quarterback Zhao floats one to Freddie Millens who jitterbugs for 22. Second and six now from Bama's own 46. The time going left to right. Zhao on play action has time. Looks for Quincy behind the defense. It tips off the defensive back into the hands of Quincy Jackson. Touchdown. It went off the hand of Robert Davis. Tips into the hands of Quincy Jackson. 56 yards. Touchdown, Alabama. Not pretty, but we'll take it. This is a go route on the outside. A deep route, a straight drop back pass, and Zhao lays it over the top. Ball a little bit underthrown. The defensive back gets a hand on the ball. Ball, tips the ball up in the air. Great concentration by Quincy Jackson. Keeps an eye on it. Tips the ball over to his uh, over his way, and he takes it and um, outruns into the end zone. And uh, again, not pretty, but we'll take it. That tip pass, man. It was. I said. I just knew I underthrew it, and but I wanted to go to Quincy regardless because uh, they had been playing him a little off. But I did check check downfield and then went to Quincy, and uh, he made a great play. You know, concentrate. Um, on catching the ball before he runs, and number nine's, you know, having a long day right now. I never feel sorry for the opposing team. Uh, I didn't know he was a freshman, but welcome to the SEC. Ryan Flugner bangs it through, and Alabama takes its first lead, seven to six. The Bayou Bengals waste no time in retaking the momentum as Tyler hits Larry Foster for 32 yards and a first down. From the Alabama 40, it's Kevin Falk for 14 yards before Tony Dixon chops him down. It's Falk again for five more yards on first down. Meridian Mississippi's Kenny Smith on the stop. And on second and five, the LSU All-American rips off 15 more. A late hit makes it first and goal for LSU from the Bama three. 
It's first and goal. We don't have to tell you who gets the football, but the Tide defense makes a nice stop. It's Falk again, with the Bama defense once more holding the line. And now on third down, Tyler is drowned by a sea of crimson. Check out Shades Valley's Tito Smith slicing through the backfield. Bama holds, but LSU finally converts a kick to make it 9-7 Tigers, 9-11 to play in the third quarter. From its own 20, Alabama quickly responds as Alexander explodes for 18. Sean Alexander carries. Let's watch again as Sean hits the hole and breaks a couple of tackles. Not much for Sean on this first down carry. But after an LSU penalty moves the tide to midfield, Zal then hits Big Red, Dustin McClintock for 10, and a Bama first down. After a procedure penalty, it's first and 15 for the Tide. Sean with the ball, but nowhere to go. On second and long, LSU sniffs out the middle screen. The once promising drive is officially over as a Booger McFarland sack forces another Crimson Tide punt. Another booming punt by Daniel Pope, and an LSU penalty on the return pins the Tigers at their own 11. With the Tide trailing, a pivotal drive is just ahead when we return to Crimson Classics. With the third quarter winding down, the Tigers are on the move again. Let's see if LSU can add to its lead or if the Bama defense can clamp down. Tyler hits Foster for a gain of seven. And on second and three, Kevin Falk sprints through the tie D for 34 yards. Kevin Falk Falk takes the option pitch for nine more as the Tiger running game really heats up. Tony Dixon with another tackle, and he was having a busy day. And after taking a breather, Falk explodes again on the draw for 29 yards and an LSU first and goal. The crowd in Death Valley senses it's finally going to be the Tigers' day to end the Bama streak. Alabama's defense puts the heat on Tyler, but not the clamps, as he slithers away to hit Kyle Kipps for the score. And with a point after touchdown, it's now LSU 16, Alabama 7, 220 to play in the third. Alabama looks to answer the crowd and the Tigers, when from his own 20, Zal hits Freddie Millens for 16 first down yards. Alexander bolts up the middle for 13 and another Bama first down. Here's what it looks like from ground level between the tackles. On first and 10 from the shotgun, Zal has a beat on Quincy, but leaves it a little behind his wide receiver. After a false start moves the tide back five yards, Bama tries the reverse, 
but LSU's penetration blows the play up before it starts. On the final play of the quarter, Zal can find no one open and scrambles for only six yards. LSU 16, Alabama 7. As we begin quarter number four, Daniel Pope's right foot launches a 50-yard missile. On the day, the senior from Alpharetta, Georgia, averaged 47 yards on eight punts. With the help of a Bama face mask, the Tigers pick up a first down to start the fourth quarter. The Tigers are on the move and maybe on the way to ending the streak. On second and nine from the Tigers 33, Tyler hooks up with Foster for 11 more to move the chains. Tyler connects with Booty for 12 more to keep the LSU offense rolling. The Tigers switch to the ground as Falk turns the corner for 11. Fernando Bryant brings him down. Ten more for Falk. Moves the ball to the Bama 23. LSU stays with Falk for four more. The Tigers follow up with quarterback Tyler for 16 yards and a first and goal at the Bama 3. Let's watch again as Dixon saves a touchdown. Falk can smell the end zone and a Tiger victory as he surges inside the one. On second down, it's Falk again, but Sandersville, Georgia's Chris Horn drops him behind the line of scrimmage. Now from another angle as the Tide defense swarms. Yeah, you know, it was one of those things where we were all like, man, I hope they don't score, because if they score, they're going to blow us out. <laughs> Sean can laugh about it now, but at the time, an LSU touchdown would have been fatal to the Tide's chances of victory. Tyler is under center, Mealy the running back, two-step drop, quick throw, touchdown, Booty, the ball comes loose, no, it's taken away by Alabama's Marcus Spencer, Spencer intercepts it off Booty, he's back to the 25-yard line, Booty had it, not long enough, but bounced off his arms into the hands of Marcus Spencer, Alabama's back in business, folks, the football went into the hands of Booty, he never had control, bounced off him to Spencer, and Spencer ran it back to the 25-yard line, a remarkable Play. Almost like he took it away from him. The ball did get into, into Booty's chest, and then it bounced off his chest, kind of fumbled it up in the air, and then Marcus Spencer takes the ball, goes down the sideline, is finally knocked out of bounds, and uh, Alabama uh, in business at about the 30-yard line. Well, they line up and you know get ready to pass the ball, and Marcus is a safety, and we're kind of worried about him lining up on a wide receiver, but you know goes through his hand, and Marcus actually comes away with the ball, and uh, he should have gave it to Fernando Bryan, let Fernando take it back. Marks is not the fastest guy. He gets ran down pretty quick. After no gain on first down, Zal hits Michael Vaughn, who fights to pick up eight. Then the redshirt freshman from Lake Butler, Florida, turns a busted play into a Bama first down with sheer crimson determination. With a new set of downs, Andrew goes back to the air, and Vaughn's nifty grab nets the tide 15 yards to the LSU 49. With the clock under eight to play, it's Sean for nine as the offense sustains its longest drive of the day. And the All-American from Florence, Kentucky shows soft hands, shifty moves, and a burst of speed for 29 more to the LSU 11. 6.28 to play, down by nine. Bama can feel the momentum turn as they knock on the door of the LSU end zone. Sean can gain only a yard on first down. Zal has Vaughn open, but underthrows him at the goal line. Oh, so close. 
Nothing for the quarterback on third down, so the Tide must settle for three. Ryan Flugner, a 27-yard field goal attempt out of Ledbetter's snap and the hold of Daniel Pope. They've done their job. The kick is blocked. The kick is blocked by LSU. It is bouncing around. It is on the turf. It is loose. Picked up by the Bayou Bengals' Mark Roman. Is the Crimson Tide's four-decade streak about to come to an end? Find out when Crimson Classics returns. With 4.53 to play and the Tide down by two scores, the miracle would have to start with a three and out by the Tide D. On first down, the Bama D drops Falk for a loss of three. Then Big Cornelius Griffin stops Falk for no gain on second and 13. Bama's safety tandem of Dixon and Spencer combine to stop the Tiger tailback on third and long as the defense keeps a faint pulse beating for the ebbing Tide. An LSU punt leaves Alabama with 62 yards, just over three minutes to play, and nine points down in Death Valley. With the Tide now on life support, Zal hooks up with Jackson. Quincy takes a wicked shot, holds onto the ball, and keeps his feet for a whopping 30-yard gain. Alexander takes the draw for five, giving him 1,000 yards for the season, but the clock goes under three minutes left in the game. Andrew just misses threading the needle, stopping the clock at 2.35 to go. Third down, five yards to go. The Tide must move the chains or settle for a long field goal, still down by nine. That's when Zal turns to his All-American. On the third and sixth play, upcoming from the 28-yard line, Zhao out of the shotgun. Andrew steps up, left side, Alexander, Sean makes the grab, avoids the tackler, 25, gets out of bounds, and the first down up the 21-yard line. Big play, all Sean Alexander. You bet. Uh, good awareness of knowing where the first down marker is, good awareness of knowing to get out of bounds to try to stop the clock, and with two minutes and 30 seconds left, they had a play down in the middle of the field, and nothing doing down now. Zhao took a look and then did a little swing pass pass out to Alexander on the left side and then, as you say, Eli, all Sean Alexander for the first down. We're in a tight situation right here and, and like I said before, I'm a freshman and I'm looking for Sean Alexander the whole time and, and Sean makes a great play, gets out of bounds. Here now is the first and 10 for the 21. Bama needs two scores and time is on LSU's side. Quarterback Zhao fakes it, lofts one towards Alexander in the That's end zone. That. Does he make the grab? Yes! Touchdown! Sliding under the football. 21-yard touchdown reception. Alabama Zhao to Sean Alexander. 2.24 to go in the ball game. It is 16-13. Time is definitely on LSU's side, but Bama's still breathing. A lot of my teammates, they've been giving me a little, a little hard time about the fake that I give, you know, Quincy and so, on some of the, sometimes this play. And it's a long fake, and they say it's ugly, but uh, it worked, man. <laughs> it's amazing how um, defensive players would just get comfortable with us. So you go out in the flats, and you're kind of standing there, and then next thing you know, you take off, and they're way behind you. And, uh, you know, our line would protect Andrew all day, so... Uh, you know, by the time he would throw it up to me, uh, it would just be one of those things. If I run up under it and catch it, it's going to be a touchdown. The Tide's heartbeat is getting stronger. Flugner's point after touchdown brings the Tide to within two, 16 to 14 with 224 to play. With just one timeout remaining, Alabama has to go for it. Coach DeBose calls for the onside kick. The ball is hit on the nose. It is in the air. Bama tips it. Alabama's going to cover it. The tide was on the bottom of the pile. I believe Bama covers it. They do. They do. Alabama has covered the onside kick. It'll be Miguel Merritt 
or Jason McAdley. They were both there. McAdley comes up with the football. A perfect onside kick. He laid the ball flat down on the tee, walked up, kicked it at the ball, skirted about six or eight yards, and then took a huge bounce. I didn't think the onside was going to work. I was hoping it was. And as the ball was kicked, you know, one of our players smacks the ball and it goes rolling, you know. <laughs> I mean, it goes rolling for a minute. And we run out there and I think Jason McGadley dives on it. And, um, you know, we're all jumping up and down and we're like, okay, here we go. We're going to score. This is it. They've given us that shot. Sean rips off 14 first down yards down to the LSU 26. Sean again, this time for just a yard as Bama positions for the winning field goal. Well, we're just going to try to you know, run the clock down and get down and, and within field goal range. And, and giving that to Sean is, is, is a no-brainer, man. We're, we're going to get him the ball every time. Sean, keeping the ball in the middle, is stopped for no gain, setting up third and long from the LSU 25. But the, you know, the kicking game has been sort of um, suspect all day. It's, it's not as, you know, they've been blocking kicks and um, the, and missing, so we hopefully we can go down here and you know, get something done. But hopefully, we can get a touchdown. I would like a touchdown. Coaches are taking conservative and just want to, you know, get the ball, you know, down within a, a decent field goal range. Me personally, didn't want to go for a field goal. Here's a third and nine from the LSU 25 off the near hash mark. Zhao, he'll roll right, he'll look, he'll throw, and it's tipped. Touchdown. Quincy Jackson, touchdown, touchdown. Second time today that Alabama's Quincy Jackson has caught a touchdown pass after the ball was tipped by a defensive back. Robert Davis again tips the football and again directly into the arms of Alabama's Quincy Jackson. 25 yards, touchdown Alabama. The Tide leads 20 to 16 with 38 seconds remaining in the football game. And on this play, same thing, wanted to get a clean release and I did. He tipped it and I caught it. And I knew I told him to throw this ball right here to me because I was open before I even left the hole. Coach Stubbs had a play in that we call sprint right rub and uh, Quincy sort of breaks open and I underthrow it and, and the nine minutes has that long day again and Quincy makes a grab, great concentration on his part. With the two-point conversion and a six-point lead, Alabama is feeling good again with 38 seconds to play. But hold your horses, everybody. We're not done yet with the crazy bounces. Wisniewski's squib kick somehow hits an LSU up man, giving the Tigers the ball at the Tide 49. For the first time all day, the bounce favored LSU. Tiger's good fortune doesn't last long as Tyler's pass sells past his man and Marcus Spencer is Johnny on the spot, sealing the deal for Alabama. The Tide celebrates Alabama 22, LSU 16. ones in the books. The streak continues. It looked desperate. It looked desperate. Alabama was down 16 to 7 into the fourth quarter and very honestly were not playing well. A field goal attempt by Flugner was blocked but then again Bama didn't give up. The fourth quarter they owned it today. Came back with a 21 yard touchdown pass. Zhao to Sean Alexander. Then after McAdley covered the onside kick Zhao and Quincy Jackson hooked up again off the ball that was tipped by defensive back Robert Davis. A two-point conversion. Bama wins 22 to 16. Since 1969, the team's not lost here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The Tide was outperformed in almost every category. Outrushed, outpassed, but not outplayed. Bama 22. LSU 16. On a Crimson Classic Saturday night in Baton Rouge, the streak 
continued. For the Bryant Museum, I'm Gary Harris. To purchase a DVD of this program, visit the Paul W. Bryant Museum at www.bryant.ua.edu or call 1-866-772-BEAR.